About one year ago at Kentwood Family Medicine, we started a new project to improve our streamlining of our patient flow and efficiency in the office. And we call it a huddle. Now a huddle consists of several different providers, namely the physician, typically his nurse, uh, a medical assistant or someone from the front office, and then possibly the office manager if that's available. Important components to a successful huddle are that they be kept very short, usually no more than five minutes. We always try to meet in the same location so everyone knows where to huddle. And it's important to bring some type of a communication instrument, just simply as like a notepad. And then also the day's schedule, which usually we printed up the night before, is also very helpful. Now during the huddle, we discuss all kinds of things that can help uh, these day go faster or go smooth, more smoothly and other things that can get in the way. An example of these would be if a physical is scheduled back to back with another physical or lots of well child visits together where immunizations may need it to be given. Some patients have special needs such as they need a wheelchair. Uh, certain procedures require certain equipment uh, that may be used by other providers so it's good to coordinate that. There may be certain patients that have a habit of showing up late or not showing up at all. Some people may need a translator. Uh, some people uh, always ask about their spouse or another family member, so having the chart ready for those other people, just anticipating that, uh, can also help it to work more smoothly. So the small amount of time that's put into a huddle can really pay off dividends during the day, helping the day move much more smoothly, and also improve communication with the front office and the back office. Today we are going to show you a couple different huddle scenarios. You will notice that the first huddle goes very smoothly. I see Shelby Tardy is on my schedule at 11 o'clock and uh, has a 10 minute appointment. She's usually late and usually has many problems. Uh, so I wonder if we can block the next open appointment and I can catch up then. Yeah, all right. Um, you have four openings this afternoon. Um, Johanny's schedule is pretty much wide open, so after your schedule is full, do you want me to ask the schedulers to uh, give everything else to her? Uh, that would be good, thanks. Um, Dr. Begro and Bruins both have procedures at 8.30, but they only blocked the procedure room for Dr. Begro this morning. So I don't know if that's going to be a problem or not. Do you both need the Elman unit? You know, I don't need it for my procedure today, so I'm happy to do my procedure in another room. Okay. But today, I got to get out by 5, so if there's a way we can have my last patient be no later than 420, that'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Bigo, you have two well childs uh, back to back at 3.30 today, and mm -hmm. their mom usually has questions about herself when she brings in the kids. Yeah, you're right. Uh, let's make sure we have her chart available in case I need it. Abby, any comments from the patient experience log? Um, yeah, we have four comments today. Um, thanks for getting me in within two hours after I called. That was um, patient Dr. Bruins. Um, great service as always. You got me in the same day I called. That was patient Dr. B. Grow. Um, I was brought back within five minutes of checking in, but I did wait 25 minutes in the room with nothing to read. That was patient Dr. Bruins. And why don't you accept American Express? That was with Dr. Walsh. Okay, I'll check on that American Express. I'll put that in the parking lot and I will check on it. And then Mandy, um, would you please remember to ask patients if they want to read something in the room? And also, if you're going to bring someone back early to do the vitals and you know they're going to have a wait, if you would just tell them about how long it would be. If it's going to be a while, you might want to send them back out to the waiting room, you know, for them to be more comfortable. Yeah, I noticed my magazines are getting low back here and kind of old, so I'll remember to bring those back and also say that to the patients when they come back. Great, thank you. Um, I think we're done. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Great. Now we would like to show you what happens when people do not show up on time for the huddle. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Dr. Bounds here yet? I haven't seen him yet. Okay, we'll start without him again. Actually, Dr. Bounds and I did look at his schedule last night and it looks okay but if he's not here in the next few minutes, we may need to block his 9 o'clock urgent visit slot, or else he'll be behind by then. Well, Johanny's schedule is wide open, so we should be okay there. Also, we need to go to the basement for Tom Nosey Often's chart. He hasn't been seen in four years. Did you want us to block some extra time? Yes, he'll actually be like a new patient. Any comments from the patient experience log? Yeah. 
One of Dr. Bowen's patients stated that he felt rushed and didn't get enough time with the doctor. Also, there was a comment from a patient yesterday that the gown was ripped. Can you put that on the parking lot? I will, I will put that on the parking lot, and I've had a couple of other complaints, so I'll actually call the linen company. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Dr. Bowens. Well, we're done with the huddle, as usual. Well, you know, I've been meaning to actually bring this up with you. Could I have a minute, a word with you? Sure. Um, we've had very few things of substance to bring up during these uh, huddles, and I'm not sure that they're really useful. Dr. Bowens, you may not find the huddles useful, but the rest of us do. We just blocked your 9 o'clock urgent visit slot because you were late, and Jenny also found that we have a patient that hasn't been seen in four years and asked if we needed extra time blocked so you don't get further behind. I've noticed that it's really hard for us to do these huddles when no one's showing up. There's been a few times when I've come and no one's been here for the huddles. Okay, thank you, Valencia. Um, I do want to say, though, actually, Dr. Bowens and Valencia, you've both been late for the huddles quite often. I think what happens is that the MOS comes here, there's no doctor, no CSA, and they are thinking if you don't think it's important, then it's not important. So then they don't show up the next time. I want to continue with the huddles. Uh, go to Dr. Bruins and Dr. Begro's huddles. They're very productive, and um, they're doing very well. They're always on time. So we're going to continue and like you guys to be on time. Okay. We'll give it a try. Okay. okay thanks, everyone.